Okay, so today we're going to go ahead and be making a bootable USB image of the Debian 11 Net ISO. And that way we can go ahead and install Debian on our desired system. So let's go ahead and get started here. The first thing we're going to want to go ahead and do is open up your internet browser. So for me, I'm going to open up Chrome and I'm going to go ahead and type in download Debian 11 Net install ISO. you're going to want to click the first link that you see that's going to the official Debian site and then click on AMD 64 now if you have an Intel you still want to use AMD 64 it's called AMD 64 because AMD originally came out with 64-bit technology in the mainline world and so a lot of developers have used that terminology since then then just go ahead and save it to your downloads folder or wherever else you want to save it to and then go ahead and open up another tab and type in download Rufus. Go to the Rufus homepage. Scroll down. Click on Rufus and whatever version you see there. You can add that pops up. Just, uh, yeah, ignore it. And go ahead and save that to your downloads folder too. Okay, so by the time you get done with that, the Debian ISO should be downloaded as long as your internet is in complete crap. And you're going to go ahead and open up Rufus now. Now when Rufus is loaded, go ahead and stick in your USB drive. As you can see, mine's already inserted. You can, uh, you can also insert the drive after you have Rufus pulled up and it will detect it. Then go ahead and select the Debian ISO you downloaded. And make sure on the partition scheme, it says the partition scheme you want to use. So in most cases, you'd probably want to use MBR, uh, BIOS, or UEFI. Or you can also use GPT. Now in most cases, MBR should be just fine. If you're using really large size drives, you might want to go ahead and use GPT. Uh, if you do GPT, you're going to be restricted to UEFI booting only which means that you're only going to be able to boot via UEFI. Now this is a more modern way of doing it. So you know what, let's go ahead and do this way. Now if you do MBR, BIOS or UEFI, if you have UEFI enabled with CSM, you can either boot it BIOS or you can boot UEFI. So let's go ahead and do it the modern way. Now if you have problems booting this and your computer's a bit older, then you're going to want to go ahead and select MBR instead if it doesn't support UEFI booting you can find that in your BIOS menu and I'll go ahead and tell you how to get to that later on so GPT UEFI and start now it's gonna ask you the mode you wanna go ahead and create the ISO and we're just gonna keep the recommended selection here click OK and wait for a USB to create Okay, so as you can see here, the USB has finished being created. So what you're going to go ahead and do now is pull out the USB and insert it to the computer you want to install to. So you're going to want to go ahead and boot into your Debian 11 USB. And you can either do the graphical install method or the end curses install method, which is just be the regular install down here. I'm going to go ahead and do the graphical install method. Get that picture out of the way for y'all. Okay, so right here, you're just going to go ahead and select your language. Then click continue. Then your country. Continue. Then the keyboard map you want to use. So American English for me. And then select your network adapter for the internet. And so you can download the packages. Just because this is the net install ISO.
So this is just the name you want your computer to be. Uh, it's also the name that will usually be visible on the network. You can keep a default for anonymity or just go ahead and change it to whatever you want. Then go ahead and click continue. And then you can type your domain name here. Now if you're not familiar with this, you can just go ahead and leave this blank. You don't have to put anything here. You just use it for specifying which domain you're going to be on. Generally the name of your network. Now right here you're going to want to go ahead and set your root password. So if you want to make things simple you can use the same password for your root and your local account if you plan to just be using this system solo. Although if you're doing this with security in mind then I would keep them different. Okay now it wants us to enter the name for the new user so this would be the standard user account not the root account. Now the username that you're going to be typing for the account. And now it wants a password for the new user. So I'm going to go ahead and type the same thing I used for my root password just because I want to keep this simplified here. And then your time zone. So I'm in central so I'm going to go ahead and select central. And it's pretty much all common sense driven. But I thought I'd do a tutorial on this just because I remember when I first installed Debian, I was kind of confused with some of the partitioning options and stuff. So here's your partitioning options. Uh, this is just a basic tutorial on just how to get it installed up and running. So it's not dual booting or anything. So the disks we are installing to, we are going to be nuking it. So we're going to go ahead and use the entire disk. And you can do manual partitioning too if you want. And I'm going to go ahead and install it on my regular 100 gigabyte 2.5 inch SAS Enterprise Class SSD, which is this one. Now I want to keep all my files in one partition. Uh, quick note here, whenever you do this, it's going to create three partitions. Uh, from what I understand, two of those partitions are for the swap and one of those partitions is for your root file system. Now the very first partition, which would be dev sda1, is going to be your root partition and it's going to also be your boot partition. Uh, one thing I don't like about how Debian does things by default, and I'm sure a lot of you would agree with this, is that it puts the root partition as the first partition, which can make things complicated with cloning, as when you clone with DD to another drive, especially a drive that's bigger, and you re-expand that partition, those swap partitions are going to be in the way, which can create a quite a bit of headache, especially if you're trying to expand that partition to use the rest of the space, because those two swap partitions are obviously in the way. So that's one reason why I might want to do manual partitioning, but we're going to keep this as simple as possible, so I'm just doing all files in one partition. Okay, so just click next again, finish partitioning, right changes to disk, or continue. Right changes to disk, yes, because we just finished making those partition changes, which it basically did automatically because we did the nuke friendly way. So we're going to write those changes. And it's saying configure the package manager. So it's just wanting the closest location of the country we live in so it can select the closest servers for when you download your packages. So we're going to be United States. And we're going to want to use the default Debian server, so Debian.org. Now you can use any other of these servers and you can have multiple for your app package manager configuration, but right now we're just selecting one. There's nothing really different about them. They all usually keep in pretty good sync. Now, we're not going to be doing any proxy configuration here, so we're just going to go ahead and click continue. Would you like to participate in the package survey? No, I don't think most of y'all would either. 
uh, with Linux uh, in different distributions, you have a choice of what desktop environments you want to use. Uh, you can select more than one. Now, your display manager, when it pops up, there'll be an icon that you can click and it will allow you to change your desktop environment. So, each one of these is generally a desktop environment. Now, if you want something really fast and really responsive that doesn't take hardly any memory usage and you want it for more technical and stability based work, I recommend LXDE. It's extremely small and it works very good and it's very stable and it's been out a while. Uh, if you just want to have a command line based installation, then don't select anything. You don't have to select any of this. Just keep it all blank. Pretty much that's the type of setup you're going to be doing if you want to set this up for a server. But if you want to set this up as kind of like an Ubuntu desktop environment, then you'd uh, check Debian and GNOME right here. And you'll notice at that point there's hardly any difference between Ubuntu and Debian if you, do, if you check the Debian desktop environment and GNOME. Because Ubuntu uses the GNOME Display Manager and the GNOME Desktop Environment. So if you're getting into Linux and you want to use something that's just like Ubuntu but not Ubuntu, maybe because you're thinking Ubuntu is getting more corporatized, then I recommend a des uh, Debian-based desktop environment with the GNOME right here. Uh, XFCE is pretty lightweight. It has a good features to memory ratio. Uh, KDE, this is if you're on a full-fledged desktop environment with all the features, trinkets and bells, whistles, etc, etc. Cinnamon's okay. I haven't really used it. Mate is good. Mate reminds me of LXDE with slightly more features. And LXQT, I haven't used that much as, today, uh, as of today's date. So... I like the default right here because you can install all this stuff later and I recommend installing all this stuff later especially if you're a Linux noob. The reason I say that is because that way you get to use the command line to install your packages and it'll help get you up to speed on Linux and where the true power of Linux is, is in the terminal. Uh, if you're just using Linux as a desktop environment, yeah, it's not, I mean it's not much to compare with Windows at that point, but once you start diving into the terminal, you start to see the light as in how great Linux is compared to Windows, especially in terms of stability. So we're just going to go ahead and click continue here because I like default. So I rambled a little bit on that one, but I figured a lot of uh, beginning users would be watching this video, so I thought that was a good page to do some explaining on. Now it's asking where you want to install the bootloader. So if you're just doing a one hard drive, one operating system based installation, you're going to select the exact same drive as you chose earlier. And this might confuse a lot of people. It's like, well, why is it asking me what drive I want to install to again? Well, it's asking where you want to install your bootloader. So if you have more than one hard drive, more than one operating system, uh, OS Prober will properly identify those OS installations usually. Uh, unless you need some extra configuration and it'll create one main bootloader for you so you can get to all your operating systems, your hard drives, etc, etc. Uh, your bootloader is the first thing that your motherboard boots into to pretty much navigate to what operating system and drive you want to go to at that point or what partition. So this is a one hard drive installation so we're going to want to choose that same drive. Okay, now it's saying remove your installation media. It's saying that just so it doesn't reboot into it. You don't have to remove it. So don't get scared away by this message here. You can just keep it in there. But there is a chance if the, the motherboard may boot to it first, depending on your BIOS settings. Okay, so we are now booting into the Debian 11 operating system.
Okay, so we are now at the login prompt. I'm gonna go ahead and type my user. I'm gonna go ahead and type my username I set. Press enter. Type in the password I created, and we are in. That's it, guys. I hope you like my uh, basic Debian installation tutorial. If you do, like and subscribe. Click the bell icon. Uh, support the channel if you think I'm pretty good at breaking down how to do stuff and giving explanations during the process to help people get a better grasping understanding. Anyway, like and subscribe.